Hello and welcome to our lesson on scaling. I'm Joe Carswell, your instructor. In this lesson, we're going to cover this idea of scaling, the tools we will use to do it, and the plans and some examples of how to get it done. So let's get right into it. The specific scale of any plan should be called out on the plans. You're going to see two units. One is typically in inches, if we're talking about an architectural scale, and the other is in feet. What's happening here, it's the amount of reduction we're getting from real life into this uh, plan set. And it's going to be a number that is very common. It might be one inch equals one foot. It could be half inch equals one foot, quarter inch equals one foot. You're always going to have the unit spelled out. It will always be inches equals one foot. Here we see in the title block the scale of this particular set of plans is called out at 3 sixteenths of an inch equals one foot, yet another common scale. To measure on plans that are to specific scales, we need to use an architect scale. These have several different scales built into them, and we would use these to pull specific measurements off of the plans as long as we know what those plans were drawn to or the specific scale they were made to. The previous slide called out in the title block 3 sixteenths scale, which is 3 sixteenths equals one foot. On this particular measuring device, you can see 3 sixteenths scale. They're always identified at the end here. As I mentioned before, an architect scale has multiple scales built into it. Every edge shares two different scales. If you look on one end, as you see here, number one is one inch equals one foot scale. On the other end of that edge, we have half inch equals one foot scale. On the bottom, we have quarter inch equals one foot scale. And number four there calls out eighth inch equals one foot. Even though we share one edge with two scales, we're going to measure from one direction for one scale and measure from the other direction for the other scale. It's important that we don't get these two confused. Looking at any one of these particular scales, they all share something in common. You'll start with a zero mark, you'll work this way for your feet, and you'll work this way for your inch marks. To make a measurement with our scale, we have a certain series of steps we always have to follow. We're going to start with identifying and then finding our scale edge on our tool. Second, we're going to find our zero and place that on the first point that we want to measure. We're then going to look to our second point and find the last foot mark that comes near to it. We're then going to shift that last full foot mark over, then we can measure for our feet and inches. So I know that might not make perfect sense now, so let's go through a couple of measurements using those steps. Before we can take our measurement, we need to be able to locate our feet and inch marks and numbers. Starting with my zero, my feet marks go this direction. I'm looking for my one foot, that's here. My two feet is here, three feet is here, and so on. In this particular scale, they're very well marked. Doing my inches, I'll start again at my zero mark. And keep in mind, this whole section is inches. My last mark here is 12 inches. We can find the center between zero and 12. That is six inches. And I will mention that the six to you, because this scale is turned upside down, looks like a nine. So don't be confused. Here is my nine, here is my six. That's halfway between. And we can find the halfway mark between zero and six. That is three inches. Now I'm curious about all these marks in between my zero and three inch uh, numbers. I have some longer marks here and here. So I have two marks. So that tells me this is one inch, this is two inches. Now I have three inches, four, five, six inches. I even have marks in between my inch marks. So you can count those up. That gives me four even spaces between my zero mark and my one inch mark. That tells me that each one of these marks is a quarter of an inch. Now that we know where our feet and inch marks and numbers are, let's go ahead and take our measurement. First things first, let's follow our five steps. We need to identify our scale, which is one inch equals one foot. We need to match this scale to that. 
I'm looking for my one inch. There's my one, so this is the right scale to use. I need to, to locate my zero, place it on one end of my line very carefully, and I'm looking for the last full foot in my measurement. Here is one foot, two feet, three feet, and I have a little extra. So I'm going to shift this three foot mark over to the end. That looks good there. So now that pushes my extra line into my inch measurements. So let's count our inches. Starting with zero, I have one inch and then two inches. My line stops pretty much at two inches. I'm going to call this three feet, two inches for this measurement. Now let's do a measurement for one half inch equals one foot. First, let's locate our feet marks and numbers and our inches. Starting with zero, this is my one foot mark, although it does not have a number one on it. Here is my two foot mark, and this is my three foot mark. Then I have four foot, five feet, six feet, seven, and eight. Keep in mind we're ignoring these numbers, but we can use these lines as our foot marks. These are also shared with our one inch marks, which one inch to one foot scale. Moving on to our inches, we'll start with zero. And keep in mind our last mark in the series is always 12 inches. We can find the center between zero and 12 inches. That is six inches. And if we find the half between zero and our six inches, that is three inches. Now we're looking for longer marks here. We have two longer marks between zero and three inches. That's giving us one inch, two inches, three inches. Then our longer marks here are four inches, five inches. Now we're at six inches. We have seven, eight inches, nine inches, 10, 11, and 12 inches. So we know that every two marks is one inch. And that makes these little tiny marks in between zero and one inch, that makes that a half inch mark. So now that we know our feet and inch marks and numbers, let's go ahead and take our measurement. So our scale is one half equals one foot. I need to locate that on my measuring device here. I've got a half right here on the end. That's my scale I need to use. I find my zero. I'm going to line that up on my end here, one end of the line. I'm looking for my last full foot, and I'm using this set of numbers here. I have zero, two feet, four feet, six feet is my last full foot. I have a little extra. I'm going to slide that six down and line it up with the end of that line down there. That's pushing my extra line dimension down to my inches. I can now measure for my inches. Starting with zero, I count up and I'm going to count, I know my six inches here, so I'm going to count back from my six inches two lines, which puts me at six foot five inches. Let's take a look at our quarter inch equals one foot scale before we do our measurement, and let's identify our feet and inch marks. Starting with our zero here, we can work our feet this direction, and these get a little um, cluttered in here, but here's our zero. We have a mark that's not labeled here, but I have a two here, and it falls in line with our four, our six, and our eight. So we're not labeling our odd numbers, one, three, five, but we have zero, two feet, four feet, six feet. If it lands on these marks here, we'll just call them out as the odd. So it would be zero, one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, five, and six. For our inches, we'll start again at zero. Keep in mind that our last mark will be 12 inches. The, this longer mark in between our zero and our 12 inch will be six inches. And then we can divide between our zero and six inches. That gives us this longer mark. That's our three inch mark. It just so happens we have two marks in between. Those will be our inch marks. We have one inch, two inches, three inches, four, five, six, and then on up. Let's follow our five steps and do a measurement using our quarter inch to one foot scale. 
First, we identify our scale, quarter inch to one foot. Now we need to find it on our measuring tool. There's my quarter inch, so I'll start there. I'm looking for my zero, and I'm lining my zero up on one of these points. I'm also looking for the scale that I'm going to reference for my feet marks. Here's my zero. I have two, four, six, eight, etc. All the way down, I'm looking for my last full foot mark. That's going to be 32. I've got a little left of the line after that, so I need to shift that 32 over that's going to push my extra down here to my inch marks where I can measure it accurately. So I would say that is pretty close. Now I start with my zero again and I'm measuring my inches. Here's our zero and we know that every mark equals one inch so we can count our marks. I have one, two, three, four, and there's my five inches. This line lands somewhere in between four and five inches. So I'm gonna call this 32 feet, four and one half inches. This brings us to a point, the thickness of the line is almost as thick as one of these inch marks. That's gonna cause us some problems as far as error, we can only get so close with our accuracy here, and that is the problem with some of these smaller scales. Let's use our scale on a set of plans. I have a floor plan set up here, and I have some measurements that have been removed. I wanna know what this measurement is. My extension lines call out to the outside of this wall and the outside of this wall. That's what I'm wondering what this dimension is. I can use my scale to find that out. You can't see it here, but my scale is called out at a quarter inch equals one foot. I'll find that on my scale. Now I can get started with my steps. I wanna place that zero on the outside of this wall. That's my first point. Also make sure that you have your scale parallel to the outside walls, perpendicular to the walls that you're trying to measure. And once I get it lined up there, I'm looking for the last full foot that lands on my other point. It just so happens that if I'm following my feet marks, I have zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Here's foot 12, and that's too far. So I'm looking for my 11 foot mark, that's right here. So that is my last full foot mark. Even though it's not labeled, I know that's my 11 feet. So I need to shift that mark down, which is going to push my extra distance into my inches that I can then measure. Looking at my inches, here is my zero, always starting with zero. I can count up each mark is one inch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six inches. There's nine inches and then one more makes 10. I would call this measurement out at 11 feet, 10 inches. An important concept to talk about when we're looking at scale is that some plans do not have the specific scale spelled out. In that case, we can identify the scale using this tool to do it. It's the perfect tool to do it, and there's one edge that we haven't talked about on this uh, ruler, and it's the one that's marked with a 16. So this 16 on here is referencing this edge. This edge of this ruler is really just a 12 inch standard ruler that marks down to sixteenths of an inch. It also has half inch, quarter inch, all the other marks that you find on a tape measure. We can use this to identify our scale. We have our plans and we need to find a simple dimension that we can reference. It just so happens on this set of plans, I have a dimension that is one foot. I'm really glad about this because all of our scales reference a certain fraction or a certain measurement of inches equals a foot. Well, I have one foot here, so all I have to do is to measure that foot with my uh, ruler here, and it will give me the scale that I'm working at. So I'll go ahead and place this ruler on this dimension. Line it up very carefully. Here I have my zero on one edge of the dimension, and my quarter inch mark lands on the one foot or the other edge of this one foot dimension. 
What that tells me very simply is that the scale of this particular drawing is built at one quarter inch equals one foot. Now all I need to do is to find my one quarter inch equals one foot scale edge and I can use that to reference any other dimension on this drawing. Before we get too comfortable with calling out all these dimensions as quarter inch equals one foot, let's check another dimension on this drawing just to be sure. I have a dimension here called out at 27 feet. It's good to find one that is also simple that doesn't add inches and we can make a very accurate uh, assessment of this. I'm using my quarter inch equals one foot scale and I'll lay this scale on my marks from inside of this wall to inside of this wall. My last marked whole foot is 26 inches and this is my 27 foot mark. So I'm verifying that this dimension at 27 feet works out at quarter inch equals one foot scale. So hopefully through those examples, the architect scale makes a lot more sense. Remember your five steps, finding your zero, shifting over, and then measuring the whole thing. Your accuracy depends on you understanding the scale and reading it very carefully. So that concludes this lesson. We're moving on to the engineer scale next. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.